We're going to be starting with Ms. Uh, Frances Black. She is a independent senator in the Irish Senate, singer and founder of the Rise Foundation, a charitable organization working with people with a loved one in addiction, a strong advocate for social justice and equality. In January 2018, she tabled the Control of Economic Activity Occupied Territories Bill, which would prohibit the import and sale of goods, services, and natural resources originating in illegal Israeli settlements in occupied Palestinian territory. The bill, the first in the EU, has been passed by the Irish Senate and is currently being debated by the lower house of parliament. Francis, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, oh, thank you. Um, so it, it truly is an honour for me to be here today with my colleague, Conor O'Neill. Um, and we are here to talk about the Occupied Territories Bill. Um, and as we know, this panel uh, calls for viable and practical steps um, that the international community can take um, and to stop the annexation of Palestine. Uh, I'm delighted, I'm really delighted to be able to present today the Occupied Territories Bill. Um, I tabled this bill um, in the Irish Senate last January. Um, just, well, it started off in 2018. Um, and since then, it's passed in full by the Senate, uh, which is phenomenal for an independent senator to get it to the Senate. Um, and it's now with the lo lower uh, House of Parliament, the Dáil Éireann, for approval. So it's gone through two stages, uh, to the, the lower house, and it has a couple of more stages to go. Um, we can't believe the amount of support that we got for this legislation um, and we do believe that it will pass in, into law shortly before the summer. So we feel very, very positive about that. So just to give you a little bit of understanding as to what the bill is, the bill seeks to ban the import and sale of settlement goods produced in illegal settlements in the occupied territories, including the Palestinian West Bank. It truly is groundbreaking legislation, and it's the first of its kind in the EU. So under international law, I'm sure some of you will be aware of this, these settlements are totally illegal. And I know we, we, the panel this morning talked a lot about that. That's what this bill is about. The EU and the UN keep saying they're illegal, but the settlements continue to be built, and nothing is done. It's just not good enough, and I feel very strongly every single day these settlements are expanding. So there has to be consequences for breaking international law. So we condemn the settlements as illegal, but by trading in their goods, we provide them with vital economic support. There's a clear hypocrisy here. How can we say they are illegal, but pay to keep them going? Trades, trade and settlement goods helps sustain injustice. It's important to say that this bill is not BDS or a boycott of Israel. It is focused solely on the settlements. It would not ban Israeli goods, only goods produced in illegal settlements. And there's, this is a crucial distinction. The terrible human cost of the settlements is devastating to witness. I saw the impact myself when I visited the West Bank last year. The restrictions on movement, the separate roads, the destruction of people's homes, we cannot in good conscience look at this situation and say that words of condemnation are enough. There are children growing up in awful conditions, surrounded by soldiers and fences. Settlements have taken their land. Their vegetables are then exported around the world to pay for the occupation. Ultimately, condemnation that this is illegal rings hollow when we are still buying the produce. Last year, I welcomed two amazing Palestinian farmers Mona and Fayez to Dublin. It was probably one of the most emotional experiences I've had. They travelled from the West Bank to meet ordinary Irish people who had been fundraising and sending support. Their farm was cut in half by the wall and the impact it has had on their family is devastating. I welcomed a young man called Mohammed from Gaza and his story was also heartbreaking. And for me, meeting Mohammed who came from Gaza was really the inspiration. I'll never forget the day he came in to our parliamentary buildings. We had a briefing and he spoke of the heartache and the devastation and the mental health that young people in Gaza in particular were going through. He spoke about the lack of water. 
He spoke about two hours of electricity today or every day, you know, and not knowing what time that electricity was going to be turned on at. And I remember sitting that day and thinking to myself, I felt the hopelessness, to be honest with you. I felt really sad. And I thought, oh my God, how are we going to help these people? And it was just one woman who was at the briefing from an organization called EAPPI who said, we must give the people hope and we have to stay hopeful. And it was shortly after that that we decided to introduce this legislation. Mohammed was the inspiration. And obviously after going to Gaza and after being in the West Bank, we were even more inspired because we saw the injustice. So when I was in Palestine, I always got the same question. And this was really also something that really impacted me. Why are the international community doing nothing to help us? We are the international community. Ireland is the international community. And we have to do something. We have to do something. So I believe this bill is an attempt to do something tangible. The settlement construction is increasing. In 2017, the Israeli government sanctioned the first new settlement in two decades. Last year, they agreed over 1,000 new settlement homes. At this rate, there will, there will soon be no Palestinian state left to recognize. And I know Michael Link was great listening to, to Michael Link this morning and to Ilan, um, two powerful uh, presentations. But I want to quote directly from UN Rapporteur Michael Link, who spoke, who spoke powerfully this morning. In January, he said, if these further settlements steps by Israel are left unanswered by the international community, we will be driving past the last exit on the road to annexation. It is impossible to square the international community's rhetorical support for genuine two-state solution with its persistent unwillingness to confront Israel with any meaningful injunctions to halt and reverse these steps towards annexation. The reality is that decades of empty con condemnation simply have not worked. For 25 years, we've issued statement after statement, but settlement expansion continues. If we really oppose annexation, then we have to, got to show it. So I believe Ireland can lead on this issue. And I'm Connor will speak in more detail about the legislation. But I really believe that we can lead on this issue. We are a country that has always stood up for human rights, and we can do so again with this bill. And I'm asking you today to come with us. I'm asking you, the international community, to please come with us. And I want to close with an example. In 1987, Ireland became the first country in the world to end trade in goods from apartheid South Africa. We recognised what was happening and, there was, and, and that it was wrong. And we refused to support it. So we had two brave workers from Dunn Stores, which is a very famous supermarket chain in Ireland, and they refused to handle oranges from South Africa. This was led by a young woman who worked in the store called Mary Manning. Those women followed their conscience. They kicked off a movement and helped change history. And I want to recognize them today because they are an inspiration. Ireland sent a signal that tangible, credible, peaceful steps could be taken to, those, to oppose apartheid that went beyond empty condemnation. And we want to do the same here today. Ultimately, I'm pursuing this initiative because I want to see Ireland take a stronger lead on issues of international law, human rights and justice. And I have no doubt that Ireland can lead on this. And if Ireland can lead on this, other countries can follow us. And I do believe that this legislation could make history and could be the beginning. I mean, we, we all feel that hopelessness, but this, this legislation can give hope back to the Palestinian people. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Black, for giving us more details on the Irish bill and also for your leadership in initiating the bill.